Jerome and I, of course, played together in the original Morphine, um, recorded the record Good, and Cure for Pain, and uh, the original members of Morphine, Jerome, myself, and Mark Sandman, and uh, Jerome left the band, I'm not sure what year was that? 92? 92, 92 and was, re was replaced by Billy Conway. And then in 98, 99, both Jerome and Billy joined forces to create the last morphine record called The Night. So the sound has changed and we came together as, this, as members of Morphine to celebrate Mark Sandman and his first, in the 10 years, that, uh, the first 10 years after his death, we, s we went to play at the, the festival in Palestrina, Italy called Nel Nome del Rock. And it was important to play as a, as a trio, f I, I felt. And uh, I, I was looking for a bass player who would be willing to, uh, to join us to play the morphine music. And at the same time, Jeremy, Jerome, and I were playing together uh, in Cambridge at various small pubs. And Jeremy is an amazing slide guitarist and, uh, and he has many songs that he, uh, that he, has, he plays and has, is a historian, a musical historian in many ways. And uh, the thought occurred to me that Jeremy would be great for this if he was interested. And so I asked Jeremy, what do you think about playing some of these morphine songs for this anniversary? And Jeremy not only said yes, but he, he applied himself with uh, an intense intensity that I, that I was not prepared for. I would moved up to the Boston area from New Orleans following Katrina and um, met these guys through friends and played with them together and individually. And they were both very welcoming to me. And we played together just informally doing strange versions of old blues songs and stuff. And then it was the significance of the Palestrina gig was that was the place where Mark passed away. He had a heart attack on stage in a, in, um, and they invited Dana to bring something back for the, to commemorate the 10th anniversary. So that's where that, that's when we started to bring Mark's music into it. Some of them are um, born out of jams. Other ones, uh, Jeremy's written. Um, I don't know if we've done any real full on collaborative writing, but Maybe somebody else would disagree. I think, I think our musical, uh, I would say, um, inspiration comes from a reinterpretation of a lot of different music. We have, we have music from the Delta, the American Delta. We have the music from Morphine, which we're all playing and reinterpreting it as we speak, as we play. Uh, the, when we play a Morphine song, it sounds like a Morphine song, but it's, it's also being reinterpreted through our own, uh, where we are at that time. And, and the same for the music that Jeremy brings with him. Uh, we're reinterpreting um, a sort of a, a catalog of a history of music that, that spans a, a wide range of, of, of uh, areas. It's kind of a prism, you know, shining something through it and then something else is coming out. You know, it's uh, taking a, you know, a song that I bring and, you know, I might play it in a more traditional lineup with just guitar, bass, and drums or just guitar bring into this venue with the electric saxophone. Maybe I'm playing guitar, maybe I'm playing the slide bass and the more improvisational style that Jerome brings and the drums. Um, everything changes, you know, it becomes a, a new kind of music. You know? In many ways, it's, the, it's in much the same way that a jazz artist interprets a standard song. You say, you could say, you know, Caravan by, by you know, Charlie Parker. It doesn't sound the same as the original. We take what, what, we, what we know as being the basis of a song and then we interpret it through our own, our own prism, as Jeremy mentioned. Right, part of the whole idea behind morphine and the way I see it is that it was um, unusual. The idea was to do something that was unusual, that was a little bit different, a slightly different, not, you know, there was the idea of the, the instrumentation with the bass, the slide bass, the sax and the drums. You could do any song in that instrumentation and it would become an unusual interpretation of that song. Because there was never any group that ever played with that 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 uh, instrumentation, and um, the way that Mark wrote, you know, he came from a from a background of blues and rock and jazz and um, standards, 
And I think when he started writing for Morphine, he was trying to pare everything down to a very simple starting point. Started with just one string, playing with just one string. A lot of the songs are very, you know, the name of a woman is the basis of many songs, and they're very impressionistic. There's very few songs that, that Mark wrote that are stories. They're, they're not linear, they're impressionistic. And so, um, you know, the way we're approaching recording or, or, or performance, it's not the standard formula that a rock band would take. Now we're doing a new record, now we're writing new songs, now we're gonna go in the studio. Um, you know, it's, we may not actually know what we're gonna play at any given night. We're, we play, we're a live band. We play, we mostly meet when we're on stage. That's when we play, yeah. and, that's when, and that's when things happen. We're just starting to work on another, a second record, and, and I'm going, we're, we're going through and looking at some of the live recordings and some of the stuff we did in the studio. Some of, the, some of it was just improvisational and sort of seeing how we can shape that into new original music.